What's going on everybody? I'm Brady. And I'm Jared. And this month we're learning all about confidence. Which is living like you believe God is with you. So let's get it. Welcome to Trinity Kids Online. Man, we are so excited that you are hanging out with us today because... We are continuing our series called Raise Your Game. All right, Brady, what are you, uh, what are you playing there? Uh, it's a little game called Drop Josh. Geometry? Why would you want to do geometry fast? Well, sure, it's, it's not a math game. It's a high pressure, high mechanical, high skill masterpiece. Wow, that was a whole lot of big words all at once there. Yeah, you know, just so you know, all you need to be is a super gamer to win this game. Okay? A super gamer, hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, can I give it a shot? You think you can handle the pressure of not being able to make a single mistake for two minutes? Well, I think I could. Oh, oh, okay, here, try it out. Okay, well, that wasn't so bad. Was it? What? How are you so good? I don't know, I was pretty good at geometry in school, I guess. Well, if you did it in like one shot, then I should be able to do it so easy. Yeah. Man, I can't handle all this pressure! Okay, well, let's practice with the pressure then with this week's challenge time. Oh, great idea. Okay, well, we're gonna play Who's That Character? You're only gonna have 10 seconds to answer, so you better be fast. This is perfect! It is time to go grab all the people in your household, meaning uncles, aunts, siblings, parents, grandparents, neighbors, whoever, because it is time to play challenge time. Let's play. Hey, everybody, welcome to challenge time. We are about to play Who's That Character? And with all this pressure building, you're gonna have 10 seconds to guess who that character is. If you get it right, congratulations. We got six characters for you to guess. Let's see if you can get them all. Starting off with round number one, here we go. And the answer is Mario! Did you get it? Oh, that one was not too bad. Let's move on to round number two. Here we go. It is none other than the Speedy Sonic. Did you get it? If not, that's totally okay. We're moving on to the next round. Let's get it. Of course, it's nothing but the man himself, Minecraft Steve. Let's move on to the next round. Did you guess it was the Among Us guy? I bet you did it. That one was hard. Moving on to the next round. And of course, everybody's favorite, Roblox guy or character or whoever. I guess in that game, you kind of customized your own. So that one might've been a bit tricky. And last but not least, it's Peach! That one probably was a bit easier. Pink's pretty much a dead giveaway. But thank you guys so much for playing a little bit of Who's That Character. Those are some awesome, crazy guessing games and you guys crushed it, way to go. We'll see you in the rest of the video. Whoa, now that was some pressure. That was some pressure, how did that feel? A lot better, but I'm not sure I'm ready to take on Geometry Dash again. That's just too much pressure. Okay, well I think I might have another way for you to take this pressure problem. Really? Yeah. It comes straight from the Bible where two guys stood strong under a lot of pressure. No way. Yeah, and we're gonna learn all about it in today's Story Lab with Zeke and Carter. Let's -a go. Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about confidence while we take a look at the story of a couple of guys who stood up to some serious pressure. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. Wanna try my favorite gaming snack? Straight from the tube or, or jar? What, what is that? The very best way. Um, don't try this at home, kids. Mmm. Ooh. I'm pretty better under pressure. 
Sometimes I don't even know what's happening around here. No, peanut butter is better than the pressure. Here. Peanut butter is better under pressure. Okay. Like the guys in today's story. In my experience, peanut butter is worse under pressure. See, no, that's not enough pressure. Enough pressure for what? Under enough pressure, this becomes this. Peanut butter turns into a cuddly stuffed animal? No. Under enough pressure, peanut butter can turn into real, legit diamonds. This looks more like cheap costume jewelry. Well, our budget definitely does not spring for real diamonds. But we can buy peanut butter, which apparently makes diamonds. Diamonds are formed from carbon. And do you know what peanut butter is full of? I'm going to say carbon? Yep. Natural diamonds are formed from carbon miles and miles under the Earth's surface at more than 2,000 degrees. Eventually, they get spit up to the surface by volcanoes. So what about the peanut butter? Well, you know that saying, you have to have money to make money? Well, you got to have diamonds to make diamonds. In the lab, scientists use something called the stiletto effect. Here, hold this. The stiletto effect is where they take peanut butter and put it between two highly compressed diamonds at very high temperatures. Okay, push. Hard. Harder. <laughs> and voila, diamonds are formed. But real diamonds, not fake plastic ones. I think these are glass. Peanut butter diamonds. I'm going to look at my lunch in a whole new way. Just add pressure. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Then Jesus gave up his life. But on the third day, he rose again. Forty days later, Jesus returned to heaven to be with God. But he left his followers with an amazing gift, the help of God's Holy Spirit. Through the help of God's Spirit, the early church grew by leaps and bounds. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Well, just a short time ago, Peter and John had been ordinary fishermen, but three years with Jesus had changed them. And now they were walking each day with the help of God's Holy Spirit as they led and encouraged the people who decided to follow Jesus. One day, as Peter and John went up to the temple to pray, a man who couldn't walk reached out to them. Now this man had never walked a single step in his whole life, more than 40 years. Spare a few coins, please. Peter and John looked straight at the man. Look at us. The man fixed all his attention on Peter and John, hoping for a big gift. I don't have any silver or gold, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Peter took the man's hand. Instantly, the bones in the man's feet and ankles shifted into place and his muscles became strong. Wait, what? what? My feet? I can stand? I can walk! I can jump! Wow! Look at this! The man took a short jump. Then he leapt into the air. He began to dance, <laughs> laughing and <laughs> crying all at once. Praise God, I can walk! I can walk! The man danced right into the temple with Peter and John, his joy overflowing in praise to God. People stopped to stare in amazement. They recognized him as the man who had sat for so many years outside the gate. Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? This man whom you see and know was made strong because of faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus has healed him completely. Peter knew God had opened up an incredible opportunity to help people understand who Jesus really is. As the crowd grew in size, Peter continued. God had given a promise through all the prophets. 
And this is how he has made his promise come true. He said that his Messiah would suffer. So turn away from your sins, turn to God. Then your sins will be wiped away. As the crowd packed in even more tightly, the religious leaders took notice. But their presence didn't stop Peter. The covenant God made with your people long ago is yours also. He said to Abraham, all nations on earth will be blessed through your children. God raised up Jesus. God sent him first to you to bless you. Thank you, Lord. I want to follow Jesus. Me too. Right then and there, hundreds of people began to believe in Jesus. In fact, the new believers now numbered nearly 5,000. You can bet the religious leaders were not happy about this. I thought we were done with all this Jesus nonsense. Mm, the courtyard is packed. They've been at it for hours now, preaching. And the people are buying it. Shut it down! We'll deal with them tomorrow. The religious leaders were so upset they had Peter and John thrown in prison overnight. The next morning, guards hauled them out and took them to stand before the elders and teachers, including the high priest Annas and other members of his family. The man who had been healed was back at the temple too, praising God. To the leaders, he was a pesky problem. They began to sharply question Peter and John. By what power did you do this? And through whose name? Peter and John had spent the night in a jail cell. They were probably mussed and rumpled, especially compared to all the religious leaders in their rich robes. But none of that made Peter and John back down. Rulers and elders of the people, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Then listen to this. You nailed Jesus Christ to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed in front of you. Scripture says that Jesus is the stone you builders did not accept, but it has become the most important stone of all. You can't be saved by believing in anyone else. Annas and the other religious leaders were floored. They were used to calling the shots and having the final say, and, and yet two uneducated fishermen had just stood up to them without flinching? Ugh. Annas was so unnerved, he ordered Peter and John to, to leave while they talked things over. What can we do with these men? It appears being with Jesus has changed them. Well, we can't say it didn't happen. All of Jerusalem knows by now they performed a miracle. We have to stop this. We can't let it spread any further. We'll give them a warning. Yes. They have to stop this Jesus thing immediately. We have decided you must never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Which is right from God's point of view. Should we listen to you or should we listen to God? You be the judges. That's, that's, no, oh, just don't do it. The religious leaders couldn't figure out how to punish Peter and John. So in the end, they let him go. And all the people continued to praise God for healing the man who couldn't walk. The end. Wow, I'm just trying to imagine. I mean, this guy had never taken a single step in his entire life. And then suddenly he's on his feet, leaping and dancing. And just think about Peter. I mean, not too long ago, he couldn't even tell a servant girl that he knew Jesus. And now he's facing down the most important Jewish leaders like no big deal. I want to be bold like that. So what's our part in the story? Peter and John were living with the strength of God's Holy Spirit. They knew that no matter what happened, God was with them and that God would bring good out of the situation. And we can experience the Holy Spirit too. That's right. When you choose to follow Jesus, God promises to be with you always. God's Spirit is always present and at work in your life. And anytime you have questions or, or going through something really difficult, there's a helper right there. And that can give you the kind of confidence that Peter and John had. When you have a, a big gymnastics meet, God is with you. Or if you have to take a lot of tests at the hospital, God is with you. When you are in a huge argument with your friend, God is with you. Yeah, all you have to do is call out to God, whether that's out loud or quietly straight from your heart. It could even be God help. And you can be confident that God will walk with you through whatever it is that you face. 
Yeah, it doesn't always mean the hard situation will go away. But it does mean that you never have to face it on your own. And that is the biggest confidence booster ever. It sure is. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God is with you no matter what. Are you gonna eat that? Be my guest. Think if I chew hard enough I can make diamonds? Ew, just don't make us watch. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Man, I love this story so much because of how confident Peter and John were. They weren't scared to be in front of all of those powerful religious leaders. Yeah, it's not like Peter and John were superheroes. They were just kind of ordinary guys. That's right, but while they were ordinary, they were bold in the face of trouble because they knew that whatever happened, God was with them. Yeah, and you can put your confidence in God to know for sure that God is with you. It's God is with you when things are going amazing, you know? And God is with you when things aren't well going that great at all. Mm -hmm. See, when you put your faith in Jesus, you can be sure God's spirit is working in your life and helping you live God's way. See, God's spirit comforts you when you're sad to give you the courage you need or when you feel nervous or scared. It's like we read it in our memory verse that comes this month from Hebrews chapter 13, verse six. It says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. Remember, you can always pray and ask God to help you with whatever you're going through. You can trust God no matter what. And I'm so glad for that. As we keep going, let's practice growing our relationship with God with the prayer that invites him to give us the power to live and love like him. Put your hand on your heart. Father God, fill us with your love. Help us to love you and everything you've made. And point to your eyes. Lord Jesus, help us to see you and to see others the way that you see them too. Point to your ears. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you and give us courage to do what you say. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We had a blast and hope you did too. Stay tuned for the so-and-so show that is coming up right after this and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. What was that? No, they weren't together. Yeah, well, they they have to be. be next to each other. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. All right. The two Those eights. weren't together? They were together. The two oh, eights were together. Yeah. Is that what I think it is? It has to be, right? What, what is it doing here? I don't know. But these things always lead to bonus zones with, with lots of gold coins and treasures. You're right! <laughs> I'm gonna get no, all no, those no, coins! No, no, no. Brandon! Don't take all the coins! <laughs> this doesn't look like a bonus zone. No. It looks like a sewer. Where are all the coins? And what is that? Oh, I think I found something. Oh, is it a treasure? No. Ah! Oh, get us out of here! Please, somebody help us! This is not a game, it's real no! life! This is a real sewer! Ah! I don't know what is going on! Welcome to the So-and-So Show, I'm John. Hey, he's Brandon, and I hope you are ready for an exciting episode. Ah! Still can't make it. No. Okay, well sorry, let me catch you up. Um, Brandon got a new video game three days ago. Blue Pose Adventure. Blue Pose Adventure. And he's been stuck on the same level for- Two days. Two days! Two days, I can't get through it. I get to the part where I ride my crammel into the pyramid, and then, I explode. It happens every time. Every time. Everything I've looked up online says I should ride my crammel into the pyramid, but it's not working. Yeah, you explode. I explode. Uh -huh. Crammel, pyramid, explode. Every time. Every, every time I do it. Uh-huh. So, <sighs> so of course, he's a little stressed and distracted. I feel like a failure. Oh. You know, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to get past this level. I keep telling him that video games are supposed to be fun. Does it look like I'm having fun? I keep telling him that he's a really good video game player and just because he's having problems with this one doesn't mean that he's losing his ability to play. Hmm? I'll never play again!
So I did what I had to do. I decided to bring on a video game expert. What, an yeah. expert? Yeah, well, please welcome someone who knows stuff. Did someone call me? Ah, yes, I think so. Are you supposed to be the expert on Blue Pose Adventure? Yep. Oh. oh, okay, great, come on in. Yeah, um, have a seat. This is a special seat for our guests, and oh, you brought a briefcase, that's pretty cool. Uh, would you mind telling them out there who you are and what you know? I'm Brianna. I'm the current speed and points record holder on Blooper's Adventure. I can beat the entire game in 38 minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> How old are you? 12. How old are you? You can beat the entire game in 38 minutes? And 42 seconds. That's without taking any warp zones or skipping any levels. Mm. So, who keeps exploding in the pyramid? <laughs> that is that guy. It yeah. happens. <laughs> I have something that can help. Mm. Oh. You have the glamour glove? Got it for my birthday. It's a game changer. Yeah. Oh. Since I beat the game, we can skip straight to the pyramid level. Just do exactly as I say. Okay, I'm not sure I can. It's okay. You'll be fine. Okay. Push the start button. Run. Back jump. Side flip. Side flip. Grab the power boost. Go. Go. Okay. Turbo run. Turbo run. Okay, I'm trying. Now punch the four flowers. Huh? What? Punch the four flowers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, get on the cramble. Uh, okay. But you gotta hurry! Go! Okay. The door's about to close! Uh, uh, go! Uh, uh, go! He, he's going! I'm he's going. going! Keep going! Uh, go! Uh, and that's how you don't explode. Let me know if you ever need any more help. Thank you. Oh, here's your glove back. You can borrow it. I think you may need it more than I do. Bye! You beat the level. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. I think we should move on. I think so too. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, that was intense. That's one word for it. Do you feel better? Do you feel? like you have more confidence that you can beat the entire game? Not really. Hmm. Well, I've got a story that might help, but I would also love a hand if you don't mind. Why, Why not? not? Perfect. It's time now for live action flannel graph. Today's story happened after Jesus had already died, been resurrected and gone back to heaven. I know a lot had happened after that, Jesus' disciples started telling others about Jesus. And two of those disciples were John and Peter. One day, as Peter and John were walking up to the temple to pray, Who knew the temple was so far away? <laughs> hey, let's take a break. <sighs> I'll race you. Okay. <laughs> a man who hadn't walked in more than 40 years reached out to them. Help! Oh, oh. Hello there. You wouldn't happen to have any spare change, would you? I actually don't have any pockets. We don't have any silver and gold but I can give you what we do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. I can stand. I can walk. I can jump. I can do gymnastics. That's great! Uh, we're gonna continue on to the temple. I'll go too. Praise God! 
Praise Jesus! The man continued with John and Peter right into the temple, dancing and praising God. Let's just say they made quite a scene because people recognized the man who had sat for so many years outside the temple begging for change. Peter, who had seen Jesus do this so many times before, decided to use this opportunity to tell others about him. John and I didn't heal this man. The God of our fathers did. This man's legs were healed because of faith in Jesus' name. Look. I can dance. Very nice. I'm pretty sure John and the man didn't do a choreographed dance routine, but Peter's words and the fact that the man was completely healed drew an enormous crowd into the temple. And when they saw the man and heard what Peter had to say, thousands of people began to believe in Jesus. Well, that made the religious leaders very unhappy. So they had John and Peter thrown into jail. And then they had them brought in front of them the very next day. Hear me, hear me. I have a question for you. Whose power allowed you to heal this man? I'm healed. Watch me dance. What? No, no more dancing. Okay. And in whose name did you do it? Can you see him? No. Uh, oh, oh, what? Excuse me. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Whoa. Oh, uh, sorry. Wait, you got cut uh, my robe. Uh, 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 uh. Whoa! Uh, okay. Dear rulers and elders of the people, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who could not walk? Are you asking why he was healed? Yes. Do you remember Jesus, the one you had crucified? Can you hurry up? You're really getting heavy. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> God raised Jesus from the dead, and it is in his name that this man was healed. I'm healed. Watch me do gymnastics. No! No more gymnastics! Okay. It is obvious that being with Jesus has changed you, and uh, we can't say you didn't heal this man. I'm healed! Watch me dance! No! Okay. It's obvious that you did something. So, we will give you a warning. A warning? Yes, a warning. You may not talk about Jesus again, or you're in big trouble. Well, I hate to tell you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I hate to tell you, but we're probably going to talk about Jesus again. Yeah, we have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Well, then just leave. Get out of here. Watch me dance. The end. Let's give our flannel graphers a big round of applause. Okay, real quick. Do you think Peter and John had the strength to stand in front of these religious leaders all by themselves? No, no way. Absolutely. It's because they were both filled with God's Holy Spirit. They knew God was with them. And no matter what happened, God would never leave them. So if that doesn't give you confidence? Nothing will. Yeah. I agree. And what's cool is the Holy Spirit can be with us too. When we choose to follow Jesus, God promises to be with us always. Boom! <laughs> Boom indeed. Well, that's all I got. So until next time, I'm out of here. You know what? Mm. I think I've got my confidence back to go conquer the video game by myself. That's my boy. <laughs> hey, all right. But first, you know what we got to do. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh! Reveal the question! Mm, uh, we should do that more often. <laughs> I know. That's cool. When have you felt under pressure? You mm. know, I'd say earlier with Brianna was pretty stressful. Huh. Lots of pressure. How about you? Oh, I can't say I'm taking tests. Even an eye exam feels like pressure to perform. I, I never can decide which one's better. One or two. One or two. 
One or two. One or two. I think two. they're all the same. Two is better. Oh, really? Yeah. Or, or when you're meeting someone for the first time, that can feel like pressure because you don't want to act like a buffoon. Well, I just right? assume I'm going to act like a buffoon. It takes the pressure right off. That's a good tip. Thank yeah. you. But you know what? God promises to be with us always, buffoon or not. <laughs> oh, I know. And I'm counting on it. <laughs> good show today, John. Hey, thank you. You too, Brandon. Except for that one part. <laughs> Wait, what?